Hello, this is Carl Ackerman, host of Journeys of the Mind. And are we lucky today? We have Dr. David Ball and Dr. Pam Sakamoto. And I use their appellations because they are very important, although we couldn't use them um, on our, uh, our written uh, comments uh, for the show. But they are very important. And um, they are both program coordinators um, for the Davis Democracy Initiative. And uh, the first thing I want to ask both of you is, um, in this time of turmoil, and you know, especially on university campuses where people don't seem to be talking to one another, um, you know, can you define what you were doing? And I think what you're doing is so wonderful. So I'll ask that question to both of you. And let's, why don't we start with David? Well, first, Carl, thanks for having us. It's, it's really exciting to be here. Um, you know, I think what you're describing about the difficulties we're having nationally uh, around having reasonable fact-based conversations where disagreement um, takes place. Or I, I think this is a national epidemic, if not a global one. Um, and, and so I think your concerns are, are shared by the two of us and, and by Panaho and, and the Davises more generally. I think what we're hoping to do with the initiative is create the conditions, the habits of mind, um, uh, and a, a, you know curriculum that really allows students to, in a fact-based manner, uh, have uh, meaningful disagreements with one another, to learn from one another. Um, that's become increasingly challenging. There's some technological reasons for that. There's some historical reasons for that. We have a lot of unfinished business in this country, too, uh, about how do we coordinate a, a truly multiracial, um, multi-identity uh, democratic nation. Um, and it hasn't been tried at the scale before, and I and I think we're experiencing some some real growing pain. So those are the questions you raise, are questions that we're thinking deeply about. Yeah, thank you. I'll just add that there's never been a better time than now. But um, when this was conceived of a few years ago, and then launched by um, Dave and and the school in February, uh, it, it just seemed as if it was more critical than ever to provide venues for conversations, to cultivate civil discourse, to train our students from K through 12 um, in how to be active citizens, to give them a voice when often many of the issues surrounding all of us seem um, intractable and overwhelming, um, that this is actually a, an initiative with a lot of hope uh, for the future. Well, Pam, I'm going to go to you now and ask you, and I'm going to ask the same question to David. So be prepared. Um, you know, what brought you to this work? You know, I know that you were a, an accomplished author. You have a, a PhD from the University of Hawaii. Um, and, and I want to emphasize with, you know, 10 exclamation points, accomplished author. Um, so, you know, what brought you to this work? Oh, thank you. Well, actually, my PhD is from the Fletcher School at Tufts University. So My mistake. Uh, it's in um, international relations and diplomatic history. I, I think that I just came off uh, five years as department head in social studies um, in the academy, so grades 9 through 12 at Punahou. And one of the topics of a conversation within the department is actually, has, long, has for a long time been civics. Now, at different points in many schools across the state and the country, um, a civics course will be put into place. Um, in our department, we decided that we wanted to weave civics throughout the curriculum, and that seems to be a general tendency at, at our school. Uh, so since I was seeing so much in my administrative role, so many opportunities and sometimes missed opportunities to explore uh, the values of um, what it means to be a citizen in a democracy, it just became more and more evident um, that um, this was a pur really purposeful work. I also have to say that Dave and I co-teach a course called Bias in America, which is a second semester version of U.S. history from the Civil War to the present and American literature for juniors and seniors at our school. And we're constantly experimenting with how we can teach students to be um, good consumers of digital information in a, in a digital landscape that is increasingly populated by misinformation and disinformation. And we're teaching um, students how to cultivate a voice uh, and that this work leads directly into that. And I think teaching and 
thinking hard about speakers and curriculum, those are really intertwined tasks. So for me, it's it's fun and challenging and um, mission driven. And I'll give the floor to Dave. And and David, you know, I made a mistake. I'm, I'm so sorry, Pam, with the Fletcher School as your PhD, but David, is it your PhD? And I've been asked the question as opposed to making a statement because uh, I made a mistake. So uh, your oh, PhD I, is from, from, from that small university in Princeton, New Jersey, isn't it? Yeah, the very orange one. Yeah, the, that's the one. Yes, the, um, with, the t with the tiger, yeah, right? Sorry, like okay. the, the, more interest, the more interesting question is, you know, sort of how you translate ideas to action. So to build on what Pam was talking about, uh, about our sort of curricular and pedagogical goals with this, I think what's at the core of this work for both Pam and myself is how do you convince students that they can take their talents and their ideas and translate them into action that has, you know, a, a meaningful effect in their world? And for me, um, I was a young assistant professor in central Pennsylvania in Cumberland County, and it just so turned out started in 2008, um, that it was the most purple county and the most purple state in the nation uh, with a very consequential election and a historical one. Um, and I just started, you know, rather than be a sad bachelor uh, in my split apartment away from my wife, I decided to, you know, walk into the, the, the local uh, volunteer office and started getting involved, started asking questions. Who's registering our students? How are we getting to the polls? Do we have answers to these questions? And it was an election that really engaged young people. Um, and then 2008 became 2012, 2012 became 2016. When I moved here in 2017, I started asking the same questions. Obviously a very different political landscape, um, both nationally and locally. Uh, but, you know, and then I started finding people who were asking similar questions to me. And then we were fortunate enough with the generosity of the Davis family uh, to really have a reading budget, to really have, uh, the, the gift of our time, of, of Pam's and my time um, to, to devote to this work, to make these resources easier to access for teachers, to make that available to schools beyond Padahal. Um, and so we're thinking a lot about um, independent school and public school collaborations. We're thinking a lot about bringing in experts both in Hawaii and beyond Hawaii um, to speak our students. And we're thinking about K-12 initiatives where we're wondering, and the research suggests that um, the earlier that you can do this work, you can develop these civic habits and these civic dispositions, the more long lasting they are for young people's lives. Um, so there's a really tremendous opportunity, I think, here. Well, you know, let me, you know, you touched on the, you know, sort of public nature of this initiative. And so can you, um, um, David or Pam or and Pam, um, can you give me examples of, the, you know, sort of the democracy and, um, initiative, both on the Punahou campus and also um, in the community? And I, I must preface this by saying that your launch um, had almost every political figure in the Punahou Chapel um, and, you know, all the major stakeholders. So, well, you did a good job from your launch on, and I was so happy to see. And of course, I was uh, truly impressed that that young man called uh, Senator Brian Schatz was there, who was, you know, one of the most impressive gifts to democracy in the United States, but we won't talk anymore about Brian. Okay, so uh, well, you uh, can't you can't say Brian you can't say Brian Schatz without saying Punahou alumnus, right? Yeah. It, it, those two words have to have to follow. I mean, he's one of our own, and, and we claim him. And I'm actually just to speak personally, I'm very proud that he represents me um, because I think he's someone who who really feels this in his bones and then acts on it um, and the job that he does every day. Uh, when we're thinking about public initiatives, um, sometimes it can be as something as simple. Something I'm really excited about in the spring is we're making our campus available to the Department of Education to host their civic education professional development. So we're going to have 225 educators from around the state come in um, and use our theater, use our resources in order to deepen their knowledge about civic education and how they can enact this in our classrooms. And then we're fortunate enough have a large enough space that there's lots of room for uh, HIS, uh, Hawaii Association of Independent School instructors to learn alongside those DOE educators and to really try and break down those walls. Um, sometimes it's a public lecture. Um, we're hoping oftentimes a bottleneck for um, public schools um, is just something as simple as getting a bus um, to get to an event. 
Um, so it might be something as simple as chartering a bus for a partner school um, where our students and their students can be in conversation and community with one another. When I talk to our students about what they're really excited to do, they're really excited to build bridges between their school and other schools. And oftentimes our schools uh, uh, come into community with one another in a competitive atmosphere. Usually it's on the sports field. Um, and we're really wondering how can we build that into a collaborative sphere where we're not on separate teams, um, but we're working together to solve common problems. Yeah, yeah that, uh, that's a wonderful example. Pam? I'll just add one more example, and because um, I know we'll, we'll have many other examples in other spheres, too. Uh, we work closely with the University of Hawaii Manoa's Richardson School of Law, as well as um, the university itself and their Better Tomorrow Speaker Series. And uh, this semester, at the beginning of the school year, uh, we co-hosted um, Maya Kolbabe, um, who is, is the author of the most banned book in America, to talk about freedom of speech and LGBTQ issues and um, how to navigate uh, the book bans in libraries nationwide and and why that matters to all of us. And um, Camille Nelson, the dean of the law school, was present. Maya Sotoro from the Nats Matsunaga Institute of Peace moderated. Dave was... Uh, helping man the war room at the university to funnel questions. Uh, there, were, there was a, a library sciences professor present, um, and the guest speaker, Maya uh, Kobe, uh, dialed in from California. Uh, that was a really wonderful event uh, that you can still access online. Dave, do you want to add anything about that one? Well, I think just that we're hoping to have opportunities like that. If I can put in a plug, um, it would be to anybody who's interested in partnering with the school, um, please reach out to us. Um, you can just Google Davis Democracy Initiative. You'll see our emails at the top of that page. Um, you know, I think we're, we're in the kind of talk story and ideation phase of this. We did launch in February. Um, and I think we're very keen not to see this as a program. This is something that Punahou is giving to Hawaii, um, but really hoping to co-create. Um, with stakeholders around the state um, of knowing what the needs are, knowing where the opportunities are, where the challenges are, um, and really being just one voice at the table to work toward common solutions. I, I think everybody feels the need for the how vanishingly rare uh, these virtues are in our country, and it feels like we're at a particular stress test in in our nation's history and, and you know you look at what's happening in our government you look at what's happening with things like crisis management uh we have a lot to improve on um locally as well um and really getting young people involved in those processes i think is a very very exciting challenge for us in the years ahead you know i was very impressed almost immediately by what you guys were doing when um uh, Dr. Bonnie Tramore, who is one of your very gifted faculty, invited um, Governor Green in to speak to her classes. And then you dovetailed into this and worked with her. And I was wondering um, how much of that is possible at Punahou because you have a, a, a very unique faculty, a very gifted faculty, I may mm -hmm. add. And you have a thriving um, you know, Hawaiian studies program and under the leadership of Keolani Kealoha Scullion, uh, you have that outreach to the public with uh, the Partnerships and Unlimited Educational um, Program um, um, and uh, Pueo, um, uh, the Partnerships and um, um, Unlimited Educational Opportunities Program, Pueo. And so I was wondering how much you guys do that, how much you dovetail on others' work, um, which provides even more examples, and more opportunity for um, the Davis Initiative. That's a great question, Carl. I mean, ideally, we dovetail as much as possible because we know that our teachers, whether they're at Punahou or in the DOE or at other independent schools, they're just so busy on a day-to-day -day basis. So if a teacher indicates to us that they're interested in hosting someone uh, or bringing in a speaker in a certain field, uh, we will help them do that. We'll take that off their backs. We will make the arrangements, uh, and we will uh, advertise it wisely at our school and 
outside of school if it's a public facing event. Uh, and then we know that we have students who are specifically interested in the topic because a teacher is requesting that speaker for their class. And uh, we know that we'll have an audience and we then bring in lots of outside interested people too. And we're just trying to build on that kernel of interest from teachers and we recognize that they may not have the time, but they have the will and we'll do that organization for them and maybe even expand it for them. So that is our approach. And I think we're very blessed in Hawaii to have um, a, a really vibrant grassroots um, energy across the state. Um, I think one of the things that's a challenge for us is communication um, among those organizations um, and the missions, oftentimes common missions that they're working on. Um, and so I see a real opportunity for the initiative to be a communicator, to be a switchboard, um, whether it's getting students involved with those organizations, whether it's helping those organizations communicate with one another, um, whether it's uh, just being an active and eager partner um, uh, in the good work that's, that's happening across the state as well. And across this campus, um, I know, you know, this Carl, like I know it's a small city and it never sleeps. Um, and so I'm always discovering, uh, individuals, organizations, uh, connections that I didn't even know existed. Um, so it suggests to me that we really do, have, you know, endless opportunity, um, to accomplish some great things. So um, in that regard, because you mentioned public schools, but I'm, and you did mention HIS, but I want to ask you very specifically, because David, you and I have had previous conversations about this, and that is the connections with Iolani School, because they have that, you know, many decade history of the Keebles chair. And I was wondering if you are partnering with them, and especially, let me, um, with that new African-American studies class that's being offered, especially because of what you guys teach, which I would like to take. <laughs> I'm not going to put any pressure on you, um, but, um, you know, the African-American studies class that, is, that has gotten so much um, publicity mm -hmm. um, because of the college board. But, you know, how much are you collaborating with schools like Iolani and Kamehameha? And you know, we have about 30 percent of our kids in Hawaii going to private schools, too. Yeah, um, I, it's, a, it's a great question. Um, and I think building those relationships is, is the first step. I think also one of the things that, that I notice at every school and that you think of as a coordinator of this kind of energy, having a really engaged and active audience, right? Your programming lives, um, or your, your program lives because there are people there to experience it, to respond to it, to build upon it. Um, and so, you know, we've been, you know, Russ and I, for instance, have been talking about the amazing speaker that they have coming in, they have Imani Perry coming in this year. And we want to get kind of students in the in the door. We're um, still uh, settling our sp spring seat speakers um, right now, but we're going to also make sure that there are enough seats in the room that every interested student, every interested faculty member, colleague um, who wants to be there can be there. Um, I think we're also trying to resist when it comes to ex years things like the Keebles chair, and I know they do a great job of this as well. You don't want it to be a one and done. Somebody parachutes in from outside our community. They drop 90 minutes of knowledge on us and they're as quickly out the door. Uh, we want those experiences to be sparks for conversations that we're having with one another. We want to we want to feel the echoes and the reverberations of those visits. How can they impact our classrooms? How can they impact our relationships with one another? How can they impact our community building? Uh, so really building opportunities um, for colleagues, for students across campuses to, to have those experiences, I think are really, really valuable. You know, another thing I'll say is that um, how it doesn't always have to build the thing. Uh, we have, we're starting a program where we're embedding students at Civil B um, and trying to get them to have a really thoroughgoing knowledge of what nonprofit news is. But I was never going to be as good at Civil B as doing that work. There, they, you know, they they live, eat, breathe that work, and they're a really important pillar in our community. So the role of the initiative there is making sure that the opportunities are available for students to experience the good work that they're doing. It's not to try and duplicate their work. Um, and I think sometimes that idea of can you create 
the room that the energy happens in, can you be a connector and a switchboard um, between students and organizations? I think there's a there's a real opportunity for us to grow that. Yeah, I'll just add that I think we have very cordial relations with our counterparts or people doing the equivalent kind of work at other schools. And it's very much how can we do this together? And and that's so healthy and inspiring. Uh, and we have a wonderful um, liaison with the Department of Education, uh, with social studies, with whom we're working closely and um, are very excited about the possibilities. And Everything takes time, and every school has its ways of doing things. And uh, we, we're just going to be patient and steady and active. Um, and we we have a lot still to do with, that. We're just getting our toes wet as we speak. Yeah, and I, I know and, I want you know, to I think, you, oh, go ahead, David. I, I think the educators listening, you know, sometimes there's that sense of like, what's the flavor of the month? And okay, are we going to be doing this? six months or we're going to be doing it in two or three years. And we're fortunate enough to be funded in perpetuity. So as long as there's a Panahala school, there's going to be a Davis Democracy Initiative. Um, and so uh, that really gives us a very long horizon um, for thinking about affecting change, um, both at our school and, and in partnership with other schools. Um, and the knowledge to say that if it doesn't happen this academic year, well, let's plan really well for next year. And, you know, if uh, if a visitor has a busy calendar for 24 months, we can, you know, flip the calendar pages even further back. Um, and that's given us a great deal of freedom and a, and a great deal of creativity to design things with a, with a really long tail. We have a, a email chain right now, 53 messages just trying to book one person. <laughs> and then other people, you know, it's one, two, three. So there's, there are a lot of uh, details behind the scenes and we are so grateful to Mark and Jamie Davis for giving us this opportunity to bring education to another level. Um, and I'm, I'm going to ask you about Mark and Jamie Davis in just a moment, but, you know, I, I'm really impressed that you talked about, you know, having speakers much like the Keebles chair, the Keebles chair, the person comes in and spends a week with the, with, with the faculty and like their time is, um, you know, uh, is well spent because they're always with the kids. They're always with the faculty. And that's a, that's a good model that, that you mentioned, David and I, um, and that collaboration is, is really great too, not only just with the Alani, but with other places. I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that the, that was the brainchild of a really wonderful assistant headmaster named Charlie Proctor. And it gives me great pleasure to see that both of you are developing this program, but you're there, you're within the first year and you haven't even finished the year. So my heart goes out to you because I know what that's like. And, um, the other question, um, I'm going to ask you about the Davis family now, both of you, and tell me why. They did this because, you know, um, you know, in other programs, like in the Pueyo program, it was the Clarence T.C. Ching uh, Foundation and other uh, really, you know, um, uh, wonderful funders, um, you know, including Unbound Philanthropy, et cetera, et cetera. But tell me a bit about them. But why is it happening now? Because uh, is there a confluence or a synergy with the advent of the historian Mike Latham being president, uh, uh. Dr. Mike Latham? Because I think that that seems to me to be a logical fit. Um, but, you know, I'm just, I'm an outsider. You guys know both best. I'll, I'll stop and ask you those questions. One about the Davis family and the other is about Mike Latham. Well, hey, one, I think Mark Davis would be a great guest on this show. I think you'd really enjoy uh, talking to him, let him speak for himself. But when I've heard him tell this story, and I, I think it's a pretty empowering one, uh, I think he was maybe yelling at his television. Um, and I think, I think JD was also at the room and she said, well, what are you going to do about it? And I think you're right. I think we have an administration here at Panahal, you know, I mean, this is democracy building is, is, uh, you know, is Mike scholarly interest as well. And so Dr. Mike Latham, I think was, was a really receptive ear to this idea, um, Doing a, you know, talking about politics is hard. Um, building consensus is hard. And I don't, I don't get the emails that Dr. Latham gets, right? But I know that every decision that he makes um, is not equally welcomed by every member of our community, right? And so I think he feels these pressures as an administrator. I think every school administrator 
feels these pressures about the last three years that we came out of um, with the pandemic. I mean, it's been very hard for consensus building. Um, and so I think the value, and, and we really feel that strength of the support um, from the Davises, from the administration at Punahou. I've got to say, the number of folks who put their hands in the air, um, from other educators to folks in the law and justice community to the non-governmental organizations, um, and just impassioned citizens who want to be a part of this, um, has been it really gives you a lot of hope for the future. And I think that aloha spirit uh, here in Hawaii, we, we live in a very distinct place. Um, and so to be able to do this work at this place, um, informed by everything that makes Hawaii distinct, um, I, I just think it's, a, I think it's a tremendous boon to what we're doing. Pam, would you like to add anything? I want to also, you know, oh, um, get Oh, your, thank uh, you. Oh, I mean, I agree with everything that Dave said, and um, I do think that 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 story about the uh, Mark Davis throwing his shoe at the TV and his wife saying, "Well, don't just do that; do something about it." I mean, <laughs> we all have our personal turning points, and uh, the way that they have turned uh, frustration with our our political system and maybe the lack of exchange of of ideas in a civil manner is is really heartwarming and generous and uplifting. And the way that our president, Mike Latham, who is a scholar of U.S. foreign re relations, looks at democracy in various countries um, in his monographs and, and in his teaching, and he teaches AP U.S. history while being president of uh, Punahou, uh, his support for this was just unequivocal uh, from the start. And uh, that is a fantastic position for us to be in as we um, attempt to convince people, right? There are always some skeptics, like they're too busy um, to pay attention. And and we we know that we have support. We know that we have means. We know that we have allies in various different places. And it's very exciting. Well, I'm going to leave the last. Um, well, let me ask you one last question. And that is, do you teach other classes besides the class you collaborate um, in together? Or do you, um, and that's plenty enough, but um, uh, do you teach other classes also at Puno? We do. We each teach three classes each semester, and then we have the remainder of the time devoted to the Davis Democracy Initiative. This was very important to us. We believe that we should be always in the classroom so that we can converse with our colleagues and collaborate with them, always understand what it feels like to be a teacher in the trenches, managing the multiple demands, uh, and uh, I'm teaching European history and senior capstone a community service uh, course this semester, and I'll be teaching European history and Bison America next semester. Thanks, Carl. That's great. And David, you? I, I teach in um, the art department, the English department, and the social studies department. I'm really interested in the connections between um, those classes. So I teach a course in visual storytelling, which is my other life, my scholarly life. Um, and then I teach bias in America with Pam in the spring and I teach our honors class, um, in the English department. I'm trained as a, as an English scholar. Um, and I moonlight as a civics teacher. Uh, <laughs> and so we're, we're, it's a course that's really interested in the relationship between the self and society and, and how we do the imaginative literature, um, I think is, is really, really important. One of the things that I've learned in doing this work is there's not one way for a student to become an activist. They can be a public writer. They can be an artist. They can be interested in direct aid. They can be interested in consciousness raising. They can be writing testimony at the legislature. Um, they can be educating themselves about the issues, right? They can be reading the newspaper every day. Um, there, there are a thousand different ways to get up this hill and we're going to need everybody's talents. Um, and we're going to need everybody's time and everybody's energy if we're going to solve some of these big global problems, um, that we have. And, and I've got to say, working with young people, um, I think they're going to get us there. We're going to hand off these big problems to these young people. And I think they're going to start working on solving them. So I, I have a great deal of hope, um, just in the short time that we've been running this initiative. So um, I'm going to leave you both with a story about each one of you so that our audience can know a little bit about you more personally. Um, I happened to encounter David with his lovely wife at a restaurant called Et Al, and there he was supervising a wonderful daughter's birthday party. And you could see not only the great scholar in him, but 
see the dad in him. And with Pam, I, I've been at some of her readings, and you know, Pam is a very modest woman, but has written really wonderful um, um, books. And I'm not going to say monograph because I think it's a uh, the books that you have written um, apply to our general audience. And so I appreciate your scholarship. I don't know how you do. I, each of you are is really doing two jobs, not one. And I appreciate you again. Thank you to uh, David Ball and um, Dr. David Ball, and thank you to Dr. Pamela Sakamoto. Um, thank you very much for being a guest here on Journeys of the Mind. Thanks thank so much you very much, Dr. Ackerman. <laughs> I really appreciate it. 